Hi there, welcome back to the English class. We are in Unit 7, Unity in Diversity. And today we are going to celebrate India. Incredible India. We are going to dive into what is unity, what is that diversity, and what is India. So let's have a look. Unity, being one, being together. Unity is strength, but there's so much diversity. Even though there is so much difference, there are so many diverse religions, languages, states, people, we are proud to say that we are one country in the entire world that is so united, though so diverse. India, a diaspora. India is a land where populations from so many parts of the world have come to find shelter. India has offered its land as home for these people. There might be a little chaos, but then it has sheltered, it has given a home to so many different religions, ethnicities, that it is a diaspora united though diverse. So exploring our India, whenever someone does that, the first thing that comes to our mind are the ethnic groups. Now, ethnicity is different from religion. Religion is a set of beliefs regarding a particular God or the rituals of that God. But ethnicity, it is a group of people based on how they identify with each other. They share attributes like what? common set of traditions, ancestry, language, the history, their culture, their nation. They might be from other countries, religion, from different religions, and the areas they live in. So ethnicity is so rampant in India. There are so many groups of ethnic groups that there is so much richness of culture in India not only religion, always try to focus on learning about ethnic groups in India. Myriad languages. Officially, we have 22 languages, but did you know that there are hundreds and thousands of dialects of these languages all over India? But according to our constitution, 22 official languages are Assamese, Bengali, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Konkani, Malayalam, Manipuri, Marathi, Nepali, Oriya, Punjabi, Sanskrit, Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu, Bodo, Santali, Maithili, and Dogri. So these are official and these are some of the lipi of these languages. But the dialects, every town, every village might, has a different dialect of the same language. And yet we are all united. Diverse clothing. Each state has a different set of, there are around 29 states in India and seven uni union territories and they have their own set of culture, their own traditions, their own clothing, language and cuisine. We all know that in the north you mostly see salwar kameez, sherwani and saris in the south, you see Oni Langa, you see Lungi, and you see Saris, you also see there's a mix of everything. Nowadays, the north, the south, everybody is owning each other's culture. They're transforming themselves and also accepting clothing and cuisines from various cultures. You know, North Indian food, South Indian food, East Indian, West Indian, yes? So there are many other minute details. These are just a broad view of the diversities in India. Now coming to the physical diversity of our country, the area, the seventh largest country in the world spanning across 3,214 kilometers from north to south and 2,933 kilometers east to west. 
That is one huge country. And the population, around 135 crores people. And yet, if you think of it, very few countries can bear so much population within them. That itself shows the amount of tolerance we have. Many a time it comes out that there are riots, there is intolerance, but no. If so many people can live together, even though they are so different, there is unity. We must remind ourselves that we are united. The ge geographical di uh, divergence is like mountains in the north, yes, rivers, sea coasts, deserts, plains, plateaus, all kind of landforms available in India. The weather, it's ice cold at the Himalayas. It's humid at Kanyakumari. It's dry on the Deccan Plateau, the fertile plains around the rivers. How diverse, yet all of them come together to form our country, India. Natural resources, the rich resources we have, some of them, coal, natural grass, minerals and metals, we are a rich country, remember that. Now, all this while we've been thinking about diversity, differences. Now let's come to the uniting bonds. Yes, though there are different religions in India like Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Jainism, Sikhism, Islam, Judaism, Zoroastrianism, yet they are our uniting bonds. Religion pulls us together. I'm not saying the same religion. All religions in India can coexist and develop brotherhood. And we are doing it. Yes? Each religion has a holy book. And what do these holy books preach? First, let's see what they are. The Jewish Tanakh, the Christian Bible, Muslim Quran, Sikh Gurus, Granth Sahib, the Buddhist Tripitika and the Hindus Puranas and Vedas. All these holy books preach one and the same thing. Love your neighbor the way you love yourself. A neighbor could be from any of these religions. Now, how about the rich cultural heritage? What is cultural heritage? People have come into India over thousands of years, bringing with them their valuable, beautiful culture and religion. And they have left reminders for us. We came and we lived. These reminders, these monuments should always serve as examples of coexistence. They should remind us of our roots. Yes, don't forget your ancestors, but they should also remind us that we are coming together to form our own world called India. We can coexist and it is a beautiful place. So we are heirs, that means we have received it from our ancestors, this beautiful cultural heritage. And what about the festivity in India? So many religions, so many festivals. I once heard someone say, on Sankranti when you fly a kite, on Eid, when you take your first bite and on Diwali and on Christmas you light a candle or a dia that you light, what does it do? It spreads happiness around and cheer abound. So the festivals of India are those days when people just give each other love and joy. They do not hesitate to participate in each other's festivities, feasts and fairs and that bring cheer and joy. Don't you love the special dishes that are made on different festivals of different religions? Don't we share them with all our friends? So some more about the uniting bonds, the bonds that hold us together so, even though we are so different. Our saints, like we have Guru Nanak Sahib, we have Jesus Christ, we have Shankaracharya, these great thinkers, these great visionaries, they have handed over a treasure to our ancestors and our ancestors are passing it down generation after generation. 
what is it that they have taught us they have taught us family values that means respect each other help each other not only is your own blood relation your family but the society around you is also your family they've taught us the concept of brotherhood in india we have an amazing word called bhai chara so that keeps us together you forget that they are different you feel they are your own charity and donations our saints have always taught us that spiritual poverty is the worst form of poverty when you don't know how to give when you don't know how to spread happiness no matter how many riches or wealth you have you are still poor so charity donations are often taught to us as our family values seva that means volunteering sometimes you might not have anything to give no money no physical objects materialistic objects but you have your body you have your will you have your strength go out there and do something for someone seva or volunteering and giving your effort and time for a purpose is taught by all the saints of all the religions that are in india god fearing we are told that don't think no one's watching you or judging your deeds god exists and he is seeing the good or the bad that you are doing and we are also taught that okay penance if you done something wrong acknowledge it accept it go down onto your knees and tell yourself okay i've done a mistake but i will correct it i will change myself god fearing and be, and doing penance is taught to every child in every family of every religion in india conquering ourselves now finally what does all this lead to overcoming your vices we are all born with good virtues and vices we do have some qualities that are not good we may have greed we may be lazy but this diverse united india it teaches us to conquer ourselves overpower the vices and let the virtues bloom and in the end what are you left with spiritual greatness india teaches us that the spirit must be pure no matter how clean you are or your surroundings are it's of no use when your spirit is not clean because a, a clean spirit gives you clean thoughts and clean thoughts lead to clean actions so this is our view of india we are proud of it we celebrate india but what's happening in the world when they look at india what's happening they sometimes see chaos they see dirt they see violence they see fights they also see the positive parts but all this is also evident to them they see poverty then what's needed by the world in order to understand us yes the world is yet to understand india they have not got the real whole holistic opinion about india they need superior interpretation see there is a concept right when you look at a glass and it's it has water up to the mid mark you either think it's half empty or it's half full so the world has to change their interpretation they have to look at india and acknowledge the vibrancy in it what is our role here then let's live up to our culture let's live up to our heritage and show the world that we are full we are brimming and we are a whole let's not let them interpret it as a glass that is half empty it's the onus is on us and they also need synthesis of the power of the mind what happens is our mind gives us fragments of imagination fragments of perception they see good they see bad but the world has to bring these two together the synthesis has to happen in order to understand us so we must also provide a dais for them to synthesize these fragments of 
opinions they're having about India to help them make it into one beautiful idea called India. Yes? So if we have to change the world's point of view on us, let's first treasure ourselves and let's first bring out the good in us. Unity and diversity, let's not lose its charm. That was about our wonderful country called India. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.